Ross, I realize we just briefly touched on this, but what is then the art of creating hit web content? I mean, how much of it can be orchestrated, you know, in the, let's take the, you know, Freddie Wong and Brandon Lash with Video Game High School. How much of it is a combination of chance, timing, creativity? I, I think it is serendipity. I cer certainly think there are skills to making a good web series, to having a good story, having compelling characters, um, even nuts and bolts things like, hey, have some decent sound and not bad sound. All of those things I think are, are important. But I, I think if you could put a formula together, Sony and everybody else in the big media world would have done that and they can't do it. They can't do it with $200 million movies. They certainly can't do it with web series. So, I, you know, again, I think you have to start with something that you find entertaining yourself. And then I think you need to make sure that you're taking care with each step of the process that you uh, don't just get an idea and grab your camera and rush out to start filming something that you plan out who the characters are, how will they work together, what is the general arc of your series going to be. Take time writing the pilot script. I have a lot of students who will they'll pitch me the story for the pilot script and I say, well, not much is happening. And they say, well, really cool stuff happens in episode three. And my response is always, well, no one's going to stick around and watch episode three unless really cool stuff happens in episode one. And so, you know, you've really got to grab the audience. And we've got the audience now on a web series has their trigger finger on the mouse button from the beginning. And, and they're, they're almost physically <laughs> um, predisposed to clicking their, their index finger every uh, five seconds. So you've really got to grab their attention. Uh, but you know, you do your best work, you make sure that you're um, getting real actors to, to play the parts, that you've got good sound, that you've thought out what you want the visual look of the series to be, that you really make it as good as you can. Even the uh, beginning and end credits, I think one of the great examples from, a fee from the feature film world of, of how you use every second is the movie, a long time ago, uh, Airplane. And it was a broad comedy, but they had comedy right to the very last credit of the movie. The last credit, uh, they would put things in the credit like uh, Best Boy, which is an assistant to one of the lighting people. And they would put the actual name of the Best Boy in the movie. But then the next credit would be Worst Boy, Adolf Hitler. And, uh, and they would just put in things like A Tale of Two Cities written by Charles Dickens. And so the credits became entertaining right up to the boilerplate legal thing at the end that says this film may not be duplicated without violating penal code 1.32575. So there. And I thought that's just brilliant. They made the, the most boring thing you can imagine uh, required legal warning into a joke in the film. So, you know, I think that's a great example of how you do your best, give it your all in every aspect of the web series you're putting together. Well, it almost sounds like creating a viral video is similar to choosing a stock. <laughs> and, and, and there's real, you know, you could look at all the financials, you could see who the CEO was and their prior performance, and you still don't know if this thing's going to, you know, surpass yeah. its moving day average or whatever. So what are some of the things that you've seen people do once they see that their thing has not gone viral? Do they abandon it? Do they keep working at it? I would hope that they, that they keep working. Whether they do the same thing over and over again is, may not be the wisest thing to do, but write your next piece. Right, you know, you. I think uh, creating series and writing in general, um, you get better at it with practice there. And you know, a lot of the people who are writing web series are fairly early in their learning curve of being writers or filmmakers. And I really would advise them to move on to the next project. It, it's it. Sometimes it's tempting for young artists to feel that their idea is so precious that this is the one and only idea that's great. And I think you need to get past that and say, okay tried it out, good learning experience. Now I know how to do it better next time. Um, I mean, I've been writing professionally for over 30 years now. I'm still learning every time I, I write a piece. Uh, I once wrote a novelist who said, every, every novel you write is your first novel because you haven't written that novel before. And so you have to put the time in, in learning and you'll get better. So what is the sort of the time frame to try something out where they're not, because I've seen a lot of these sort of serial creative types where they come up with this great precious idea <laughs> and then somehow they abandon it and then there's various reasons why. Yeah, there's a real tension between, you know, you don't want to just 
get an idea and rush out and shoot it tomorrow and, and not put any planning into, into it. But there you can also get caught in the, I'm gonna write my 900th draft of this script uh, trap, or I'm gonna do one more edit and so on. So you, you have to find a balance between uh, being thoughtful and being careful and doing your best work uh, and just trying to reach something that's unattainable, which is perfection. Uh, I give another example I give my students of the kind of care that professionals put into their work is I have a copy of an outline from the series Mad Men. Uh, it's from the fourth season. It's the first episode of the fourth season. It's written by the show's creator. So he's done the show for three years. He's won Emmys for Outstanding Drama three years in a row at that point in time. Clearly knows the show and his craft very well. At the top of the outline, it says 10th draft. So that's a professional uh, who puts that kind of care, effort, and revision into his work. Um, so again, it's a balance. You don't want it to say uh, 105th draft. That seems too many to me. How many times do you have to rein your students in and say, okay, guys, realize this is a grand idea, but you know, this isn't, you don't have James Cameron behind it. So you've got to do more of a tape type of thing where it's just one room, what you know. Yeah, well they you know they, they have a limitation, the 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 budget for, for starters. But there are there are all kinds of ways that that's your job as a, as a professor and as someone who's been a professional to try to give them your perspective. Uh, sometimes they'll be pitching the story idea to me and I'll just say you can't do that in five minutes. That's you you just pitched eleven scenes, each of which is approximately a minute and a half and uh, that I need to give them that perspective. I, I make them, when they're preparing to go shoot, um, not only create a shot list, but create something I call a time management budget, where they cut and paste their shot list and say, okay, our call time on Saturday is 8 a.m. Between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m., we're gonna do these shots here, and they're in the list. And you can see real quickly when they, you say, Really, so let's not say 11 a.m., let's say 8 and 9 a.m. You're gonna do 21 setups between 8 and 9 a.m.? I don't think so, that, that's not right. Or I just had this conversation yesterday with the students where I said, I think you've uh, got something pretty ambitious here and your project what, with your pilot, they were shooting episodes now, subsequent episodes, uh, you found that improv with the actors worked really well, so you want to make sure you leave time for that. And they had a response to this, which is, well, we think we're going to go faster because we have two cameras. And we've got an extra hour and a half at the end of the day that's kind of fudge time that we, if we spill over into it, that's okay. So, you know, that's part of the dialogue you engage in as a professor with the students to make sure that they're um, benefiting from your experience.